let's plan some stuff. Alright, we find ourselves back in Trello once more, and in this modding tip, we're going to be discussing some planning that you might be able to do with, for example, Trello over here for your mod. Now, this has actually been requested, a requested topic here, basically explaining a little bit of how I personally do my planning for a mod, and hopefully this is also going to be useful to you. So overall, as you see, I use Trello in this case. Now, this is just one example that you can use, right? It's sort of a Kanban board. Now you can use all sorts of different tools. There's some free ones, there's paid tools, all of this. Now, Trello is actually free to use if you have less than five boards or something like that. And usually you really only need one board. Now, the first question, of course, is why would you even need this, right? Why do you want a board like this? Why do you want to plan stuff? Well, it definitely does make sense to plan a few things ahead. And especially if you're working in a team with multiple people, good coordination is one of the most important things in a team that you have. If you are two people and it's going to be okay, right? Three plus or four plus, you start getting into the issue that you have to communicate fairly regularly. Otherwise, you're going to not be on the same page. That's where some Trello board like this comes in very handily, for example. The way I personally do it is I've one list over here with the upcoming versions. And those sort of have like one or two big words, like what the actual version is supposed to be. We can, for example, see that 0.10 was supposed to be all of the basics. And then for this particular version, I always have a separate list with each individual item that I actually wanted to add. Now, this is very hard to really teach this, but you basically want to break down every little, you know, sort of milestone that you wanted to add. So, for example, the first thing I wanted to have is harvestable slimes. I just wanted slimes that I can somehow harvest. If you don't quite know what I'm talking about, this is all from my own mod. I do have a devlog series on it. I will link that in the top right corner so you can check that out as well. But that is the general idea, right? So I wanted, I wanted to be able to right click slimes and they drop resources. Then I just wanted some custom items, some custom block. I created the data generation, JSON files, loot tables, some basic recipes. Piece. So really, as the name suggests, some basics, right? Then some fixes, as you can see here, and then had some tier-based items. That's a little bit more advanced, right? But it was still part of the basics of the mod. There is a mismatch between how basic something is for the player and how basic it is to implement. This is something that is very interesting. For example, in the fluid handling over here, right? This was already version 0.3, right? With the machines and the control stuff. So fluid handling for the player is something completely normal, right? They hover over a tank that is inside of a GUI, and and they expect it to show what the contents of that is and for the GUI to render the fluid that is inside of it. For the player, absolutely normal thing that is nothing crazy. For the programmer or for the person who's making the mod, actually quite a difficult challenge if you've never done it before. That's why sometimes there's a mismatch here and the basics here really refers to the basics for the player. We also added some custom effects over here as you can see and some more other stuff as well and that was pretty much the basics done. Then I went on to world generation. You can see that's also done basically just generating those different ores over here and then I I am now currently on version 0.3.0 machines. You can see there's some things that I'm done and some things that are not done. What I usually do is I usually have some labels. You don't really need that many labels. Personally, I have a done label, work in progress label here. I also have a no label. I also sometimes have an urgent label or an important label, something like that, so that I know that, okay, this is very important. But in this case, you know, with the mod, really there's nothing that is overly urgent in that case. And you can also see sometimes I am jumping between versions a little bit. So I have already some integration over here with JI and I also have some tags already done. This is just because sometimes, you know, you're you might be like, ah, oh, I actually don't want to do any of those things. I actually want to jump forward a little bit or jump backwards a little bit. And that's totally fine. This is just a good roadmap to have. And now I also have another few lists, right? So those are going to be the ideas list. That is actually one of the most important ones. Here you basically write down every type of idea that you might have that might be really, really awesome or that you're not sure about yet that you might want to implement in the future, but you don't really have a particular version in mind for that or anything like that. I also have another list for special items over here. Now this is, of course, you could put this into the ideas list as well, but I just have this separated out. And because I'm working with nano attack over here, I also have a list for textures and and, you know, he's basically added to all of those different cards there individually so that he can basically change those textures and he can work on his own time. He knows what he has to do, right? Like what textures to do. He can mark those off. You can see basically you can take those off or not and then basically do that. That is a really cool idea to basically synchronize yourself with another part of your team. Right now, usually when I have the version done, you can see this is actually done and it's also done right here. What I then do is I just go here and archive the entire list. I'll do the same with the world gen. 
and then you know it removes a little bit of the clutter over here so that is pretty much it i usually want at least two versions fully mapped out here now once again fully mapped out means that it's roughly mapped out right i don't even know if i'm going to add these special items in this machine some control maybe they're going to move up to the first progression version or something like that it's very important while you're planning this is never set in stone right things change during the development maybe you're like you know what i actually wanted to do something different i want to display the resources first i want to do this first i want to do this first maybe you have a really cool idea and you just want to try it out don't think this is a plan that is set in stone you can always change it while you're working on it you can for example see inventory handling here i just said no now i'll probably personally do inventory handling at a later date maybe in the integration phase yes yeah, so that is a general overview of how i personally do my planning with trello as i've said it's not going to be the craziest thing it can be very useful some people really like this but some people it doesn't do anything they don't they don't have any positive impact for on this on their planning some people might just have a tech file with a few bullet points some people have google calendars or all sorts of other things this basically comes down to you you know yourself best and if this can be useful to you then of course you can use that and it might enhance your modding experience but whatever the case may be that would be it for this modding tip right here hope you found this useful and you learned something new and i'll see you all in the next video so yeah